Hey everyone, so today I thought we'd uh, look at a cookie cutter curve brush that I just created. So if we go to uh, tools and select a tool, select the plane 3D, drag it out onto your canvas, pressing shift to align it to your front view uh, and press T to go into edit mode or hit this button. Once you've done that, hit make polymesh 3D. So it's a sculptable mesh, go to geometry, We'll turn off smooth and we'll divide this. Every time we do this, you'll see that this number will go up by a factor of four. So we want to get this up to around a million polygons and then delete the lower subdivision levels. So I'm gonna press Shift F to show you what that's done. It's given us all these polygons here. I'll press Shift F to toggle that off again. And I'm gonna reduce the color here just to something a little bit easier on the eye. So now we need to load the brush. So press B and then load brush and then select the SF IMM curve cookie cutter brush and hit open. This gives us six different brushes now that we can work on. So uh, we'll start from left to right. So the wiggly curve brush first, if we just draw this out, you can see that you, it'll create these wiggles for us. And um, if I click on curved, it will change that to slightly less strong wiggles and straight will give us a straight one. Each of these has some depth to them. So as I go to a side or a three quarter view, you can see that. And the intention ultimately is that for these ones, you can either keep them as these kind of sharp edged ones, or you can ultimately divide them once you're finished and um, just to give you a slightly smoother look. So I'll just turn on sub, uh, dynamic subdivision to give you an idea of what they would look like with that turned on. If you wanted a slightly smoother look, uh, but if you don't just turn it off and keep it with the more faceted look. These brushes work with um, non-closed meshes. So if you want something that's not gonna be closed, you can feel free to use this. Uh, but for the purposes of this, of this tutorial, we're looking for actually cookie cutters. So you can use these for dresses or frills or something like that if you want to, but um, walls in an area or something. Um, but I'm gonna undo that and we're going to use the loop brushes. So these ones are intended to be an actual loop. So for this, if you draw it out, uh, and you, you get it close to finishing, you'll see that when you let go, it will actually close that and create a closed loop. So these are the shapes that we're gonna create for our cookie cutter. If I click again, I can choose the other kind um, of curved loop or straight loop. And once I click on that, it will change these. You'll see some of these will be quite thin. We can vary the thickness of this later and the height of this later. So at the moment, all we're really concerned about is the shape. So we could use this to create our shapes, um, but it's not ideal. Uh, sometimes you have a very specific shape in, in mind and if you're trying to draw it out, it can be difficult to do that. So what we're gonna use instead is alphas. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to load an alpha. I'm gonna to go to alpha and then hit import. And I'm going to import an image that I found on uh, an image search on the, on the internet. Um, so I don't know if these are copyright, uh, so please don't use the same ones. This is just for the purposes of demonstration. I think that's fair use. So I'm just gonna open that uh, and you'll see that this is our, our new alpha. This is by just hitting alpha and load, what we've done is we've brought it into our cookie cutter brush, which is not what we want. So we want to turn that off. So I'm just gonna go here and turn that off. Instead, we wanna use that when we're actually masking. So if I hold down control, control will give us our normal masking. So, but with control held down, this is the time we wanna load that alpha. So I'm gonna go here and choose that alpha. It will be the last one in this list. If I do this now, you see we have a couple of problems. One is that it's stretched, and two is that it's inverted. That's not what we're looking for. So with control still held down, I'm gonna to go to alpha, and I'm gonna hit this, which will be the inverse. That will give us the inverse that we can now drag out, and that's that's what we're looking for. But it's giving us you know, potentially stretched or squashed shapes. So that's not what we're looking for. So what I'm going to do is go up here and change the stroke type to rectangle. Rectangle will allow us to still draw this out, but also, Rectangle will allow us to change this to be square, so it will always be square when we when we click on it. So I'm gonna undo that last stroke, and now you'll see that every time I draw this out, um, I can't actually squash or stretch this. It will always make it square. Also, as I'm holding down control, I can also hold down space bar, and that will allow me to position it somewhere. So I'm holding down space, let go of space, hold down space. So we can use that to control where we position this, and then let go of control once we're done. This image that I had was a brown and white image and not black and white, but there's enough contrast here for this to work. So all we need to do is go to edge loop and say edge loop masked border. What that will do, if I press shift F to toggle on the polyframes, 
this will show us the polyframes that this has now created. So it's created this nice sharp border around each of these images. So we can now hit Control and Shift and tap on one and then go to our Modify Topology and Delete Hidden and get rid of that background. I'm going to press Shift F to toggle off the polyframes and I'm going to Control drag on the canvas to get rid of our mask. So we're now ready to start using our loops. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to auto group these. So I'm going to go down to polygroups and I'm going to hit auto groups and that's going to take each of these if I press shift F and assign them a different color which means we can now go to subtool split and group split that gives us a different group for each one which we can rename if we want and um, the reason I'm doing this is because if you try and do too many curves on one object and um, ZBrush tends to not like it basically so once you've done this we can select one here choose our curve brush holding down shift we start start drawing on the model hold down shift as we go out to the edge and then we may need to tap it again once just for it to update so you can see that that I'm happy enough with that one if I decide to change it to another brush I can click on that and change it to that or change it to a straight brush like that it's a little bit thin the straight brush and you'll see if I make it bigger and I click on it again we start losing the original shape a little bit so if you're going to make a dramatic change to the size of a brush like that undo your stroke in the first place do it again from the inside out and you'll get a much cleaner stroke the second time so we can take that from this i'm going to alt tap to the next tool control shift or oh, sorry right start start drawing out and press shift as you get towards the edge as i go down to this one or maybe i'll make this a curved loop it, the very first time you draw it out it goes a little bit crazy so you need to you may need to tap it again once and if the brush stroke is too big you're not going to capture any of the details so i'm going to make this one a lot smaller i'm going to hold down shift as i'm drawing it out tap it once and we get a much better result we can maybe even go smaller again press shift and we get a better result it's at this stage here that you may want to edit some of these but you have to be careful when you're doing this that sometimes it will make changes to other places so if you are zooming in, you may want to do this after the fact. Um, we change this to a spiky one for the line. I'll alt tap on him, start drawing out, press shift, and then tap once until we get the size that we want. Alt tap to get rid of it, and we're now we're good. So we've closed off all of these shapes, but we, as cookie cutters, they don't work because we have these bases. So we need to remove these bases. So each of these currently has a mask on it. You can see I can control drag and turn that mask off, control drag and turn it off, control drag and turn it off. So for each one, I just need to control shift, click on it once and twice, and then go to modify, go to geometry and delete hidden. Click on this one, control shift once, twice, delete hidden, control shift, alt, I'm alt, alt clicking to just choose a different sub tool here. So alt click, Control shift once, twice, delete hidden. Alt, control shift, click once, twice, delete hidden. So this gives us our final shapes. So if you now want to change the depth of your cookie cutter, you can do that by going down to the deformation. And in the inflate here, we can turn off the Y and Z axis and just inflate this on the or y, X and Y axis and just inflate this on the Z axis to get whatever depth that you want this to be. So again, it's going to change per object so this one i've turned it off for this one but because this is a different object this is going to reset so we need to turn both of them off if we want it thicker we can turn off the z and just do the xy and you can inflate the thickness of this now so depending on what look you're going for and um, if you want to do all three at the same time we can do all three be careful not to go crazy on it like but yeah so this is it. Once we have this, we need to get these to the right scale. So I'm going to go to the Z plugin menu. I'm going to go to Scale Master, and I'm going to say I work in centimeters. So sliders to subtool size, and I want this is going to tell us what we currently have. So the y-axis on this is this way, top to bottom. So let's say an average cookie is maybe six or seven centimeters. So I'm going to put in six. And press tab it's going to automatically update the rest and when i hit resize subtool it's going to resize this to be six by five by 0.3 centimeters tall and it's also going to take all of these other sub tools and scale them relative to that as long as i keep this turned on so if i hit resize subtool now it'll tell us that it's going to do this 
these all get, now get resize. If I go to here, we can I can hit sliders to subtool size and see that that's five by six. This one sliders is five by five. It'll be there thereabouts. But all of these are like about a centimeter tall. So if you need your cookie to be deeper than this, just turn off relative, change this to the height that you want, whether it's one or two centimeters tall, and hit resize subtool. But turn this off because you want to do this on an individual basis. Otherwise, you'd be making this change for all of them. So you do that here. Go back here as well. I'm going to check the subtool size, change this one to two, and resize that, and etc. and so forth. So once you've done that, you're now ready to export them. So go to Z plugin, 3D Print Hub, update the size ratios. We know that this is now this size in millimeters. Go here, export to STL, and export. Um, if you want to select all or visible, that's up to you. But from here on in, you should be able to 3D print these and then use these as your little cookie cutters. One last thing is to be food safe. There's a link here I'm going to put um, in the description as well about how to be food safe with uh, 3D printing. It depends on what you're printing with, whether it's ABS, which is evil stuff. But uh, if it's PLA, you may need a coat of polyurethane on this. But it totally depends on you. Um, have a look at it, see what's what's in the article. You can see people are using it. Uh, if you limit the contact time, it should be safe enough. Like, but uh, I don't want to get sued by anybody. So you know, have a read of this yourself. I'll put the link in the description. So hope these brushes help as usual. And um, feel free to comment in the in the description. And if you have made any cookies with them, I'd love to know. Consider subscribing to the channel to encourage me to keep making this kind of content. All right, bye.